Creativity, episode 117. Albums that turn 40. Sorry, folks, we had to do a little bit of a rearrange and a scuffle around as our guest had to reschedule for another date. So, we have Saturday nights live at the Vodge at Creativity Talking, Mr. V. Uh, thanks, Biff. You're a little talkative today. Uh, had some sugar or something? Nope, it was cocaine. All right, uh, moving on. So, Jay, what's happening, buddy? <laughs> what's going on, man? Not much. Not much, not much. Okay, let's start off the evening by uh, discussing what we're ingesting as we sit down on the digital couch and hang out um, like we do every Saturday night. Jay, what are you drinking? Uh, the usual bush light, my man. Bush light, Jesus. The diabetic beer of choice. That's like a half shower there, Shatter. <laughs> oh, that little tip out to George there. Uh, so happy Veterans Day uh, to all the veterans. Um, Absolutely. We were going to do a veterans uh, show on uh, PTSD. We're going to have to reschedule that. Uh, we apologize, but that's okay. Things happen, and uh, you got to be floored. you got to think on your feet. So we decided to talk about... Uh, Albums that are turning 40 years old. So if you didn't want it to feel old, this is your show. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's amazing how fast time goes by because to me, I don't know, music to me, Jason, is a, it's a time machine. Oh, absolutely. I mean, like, you know, how many times you hear a song and it takes you back to, you know, uh, maybe a particular memory or, you know, a time in high school or soon thereafter, you know, yeah. um, yeah, it, it definitely, it imprints on your brain, you know, a good tune. Oh, for sure. And how many times, like, when you, like, had the shittiest day, you're like, you know, fuck this. This day fucking sucks my ass. And all you can think about, dude, when I get home, I'm going to crank Ronnie James fucking Dio on number oh, yeah. 10. And then I'm going to play Yngwie Malmsteen. Then I'm going to do Rush 2112, followed up with Motley Crue's greatest hits, and then Led Zeppelin 2. <laughs> or, you know, you and then you're in the best happy. fucking mood ever and you're ready to I don't give a shit yeah or if you had a really shitty day man you might like go like straight death metal you know what i mean you oh, just that's really totally... want to like oh. off, you know yeah die 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 <laughs> it works man yeah so so in these um albums that we're going to be talking about here we have great musicians and bands single um, solo artists and songwriters. We have the Rolling Stones. We have Joe Walsh, Neil Young, Iron Maiden, Motorhead, Def Leppard, Black Sabbath, Van Halen, White Snake, Judas Priest, Pretenders, Meatloaf, Tom Petty, Santana, Blue Oyster Cult, Rick Springfield, just to name a few. All turning forty years old. Amazing. Um, yeah. So we're on. Uh, we're taking the list here, or we're taking content, or we're um, reading content off of uh, Ultimate Classic rock.com and uh the top one that they have here as you scroll down is a great album dude foreigner four mm, yeah just played my town actually uh this past week on wednesday uh, i did not know about it uh one of the girls at work went showed me some some clips off her phone you're like what about me yeah well, didn't nobody invite me? Right. But, uh, she said it was great. Um, you know, obviously. Uh, it's like it was great. You shouldn't have been there. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, I'm not sure, you know, uh, new, new lineup, I think, with Foreigner. I know Jeff Pilson from Doc and is playing bass with him. Yeah, he's, uh, he's been playing bass with uh, Foreigner for like 20 years, man. Uh, oh, it's been that long? Yeah, well, he's, you yeah, know. he's, he's uh, us, or at least 14, 15 yeah. You know, you blink now and it's three years later, but he's been right. in there a considerable amount of time. Yeah, you, know, you get to a certain age and, like, your sense of time kind of goes, too. I noticed that. Yeah, because when he does stuff, Warner comes first and then Dokken. Yeah. So, yeah. you know. And then, uh, you know, he's doing End Machine, too, with George. Again, they got their new band with Robert Mason singing. You Dude, know? Yeah. Uh, what that's good you... stuff if nobody's checked that out yet. Yeah, that is a, that's a great, that's a great fucking band. Good album, too. Sure. But yeah. uh, Foreigner 4, uh, directed by Mutt Lang. Mm. Uh, Head Games was on there. Uh, Urgent, Jukebox Hero. 
Way yeah, all the hits, like right? Yeah. Uh, Jukebox Hero was a big uh, song in the house when uh, my kids were small. TJ loved that fucking song. Yeah, yeah, totally. That was one of like the first songs he would like walk around and sing, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you were into top forty, we had a uh, face value with Phil Collins. Uh, in the air tonight, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, most famous drum riff, right? Oh, exactly. Did you ever see that? Uh, there's like a t- I don't know if it's a TikTok or a U- YouTube thing or whatever. The dude downstairs. Oh, it's not. Yeah, the the never ending <laughs> drum roll. <laughs> it's, so good, it's like how, dude. That's like 150 drum kits. Easy that he went and did that with, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but app- apparently, you know, it's based on a, a true story. The lyrics in that song. Do you know about that whole thing? I, I heard something about he was walking one night and he, he saw some kind of incident, right? Um, yeah. I, I'm a little. Hazy on the details. But. He saw someone get whacked on the beach. Thank uh, you, Vito. Hey, anytime. So, yeah, so he saw someone got uh, killed on the beach, and he called the police, right? Mm. And I don't know if this guy was a drug dealer or whatever, but it was right around, you know, like Miami Vice time, you know? Sure. And they wound up doing an episode, I don't know, in the second season or third season of with Phil Collins in it doing the song, the story of the song. But, um, oh, wow. yeah. And, uh, so he, I guess they were trying to set him up or something or try to, you know, encapsulate this, uh, fugitive. So Phil walked over to the guy at breakfast because they're staying at the same resort. And he's like, Hey, what's going on? Here's a couple of tickets to my show tonight. Da 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 da. So they had, uh, spotlights set up where the tickets were. You know, the seat numbers. Mm-hmm. And when they did the drum, doom, 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 and that's when the all the spotlights went on those that dude. Oh, wow. And they were already surrounded him, and they arrested him at that moment. I don't know if it's true or not, or if that's, you know, part, part memory, part Miami Vice, part complete fucking fabrication after... Yeah, rock and roll folklore, who knows? Yeah, exactly. But uh, another album uh, we had is... Uh, and Phil's still touring, by the way. I mean, I saw recently. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. think he's in the best of health. I think he has to sit no. down a lot, you know, on stage and yeah. stuff. But God he's, bless him for still trying and still Oh, doing for it, sure, you know. You know? Um, yeah, he's got a flop foot. Um, oh, so okay. basically, you know, neuropathy. So he had an issue uh, with his back, long-term back problems, had sur- uh, surgery. And yeah. uh, sometimes part of it is, you know, you lose the feeling in your uh Lower extremities could be nerve damage and yeah. all this other stuff, so he can't properly play the drum kit. He tried a couple of years ago, but uh, yeah, his son is uh, playing the drums. Oh no, kidding! Wow. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, and he's got to sit down when he performs, and uh, you know, a lot of yeah. older performers have done that, as we've seen. It's just weird, you know, for our generation, just like any others. But we're seeing all our heroes fucking. Fade away. They're aging, you know what I mean? Man. Oh, no. for sure. You know, which means yeah. we are. <laughs> yes, you know what are. I mean? Then that's what's really <laughs> scary. You know, it's like, holy shit, do you see Madonna? Holy shit, did you see yourself in the mirror today? <laughs> All right. Yes, I did. I don't recognize myself these days. Yeah, like there's this mirror at the gas station right at belly height, and I go, you know, why would you do that? <laughs> yeah, that's just a cruel I'm joke, like, that's man. just, you know, I'm like, fuck the shoplifters, you know. Hey, but listen, good news, man. I heard I heard a thing on the radio the other day. They said the uh, the dad bot is in these days. Come on. Yeah, in this chair. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. I don't see any, any young chicks chasing me. Oh, down they're just the lining chair. up around the block. <laughs> That's going to cost I me. I've been accosted by uh, 20-something females lately, so yeah. I'm not sure if I buy that bullshit, yeah. you know? Right. I was gonna say, what age group are digging the dad bods? The you know, <laughs> That's right. sixty to eighty <laughs> demographic. What's the, what's right, yeah, seventy, eighty. Yeah. Right. Oh, thanks. You know, but yeah. So then we move on to uh, ACDCs for those about to rock. We salute oh, you, man. What can you say about that, dude? ACDC is such a great band. Oh yeah, I mean, they just... do what they do, man, and that's it. 
that's it, man. They got the formula, and you know what? Yeah. They're just gonna. They're just you know. Dude, they're their new album. Up. Whoa. I give them credit for trying, but uh, mm-hmm. I, I'm personally not a fan of it. Um, but I know, you know, they lost uh, Malcolm, so they yeah. had some. You know, I'm sure they have a lot of tracks of his stuff. Yeah. But uh, you know, and they did that, and there was probably just a weird. But they had to do it, you know, to to get over that hump of all the band stuff that was going. You know. Yeah. I you know more power to them from doing it. You know, but it's not like they need to release. New music. Nah, they're I mean, legends, man. Yeah, I mean, they can literally fill up their whole set with, you know, the best two songs of each album. Right. And let's face it, at this point, that's really what people want want to hear. I mean, you, you go to an ACDC show, you just want to hear the tunes, you know? Yeah. You know, yeah, you know, do, yeah. And plus, at you know, at the point that they are, it's like, okay, we're going to record 17 songs for this album. Dude, why? Right. Or I don't know if there's 17 on it. It could be 12. But even that, you know, it's like, you know what? Here's what people should do. You don't need the whole album anymore. Just do EPs, man. Yeah. You know, I was yeah. thinking about that for, you know, doing for some stuff that we're talking about. Too. I'm like, well, maybe we'll just do some EPs in certain genres. Just boom, boom, yeah. boom, 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 boom. Well, you know, a lot of people nowadays, I mean, they're, they're not even album focused. It's just like singles, you know, just put singles right. out. Right. You know? Oh, totally. So. But yep. uh, yeah, for the, uh, for those about to rock, we salute you. And guess who that was produced by? Was that Mutt? That was Mutt Lang again. So we have two um, legendary albums coming out in the same year by Mutt, and we're only he, in the first. He was a powerhouse producer, no doubt. Yeah. Oh, dude, he was a monster. Yeah. You know who else did he, he did? Uh, Def Leppard. Fucking Shania, oh, yeah. Shania Twain. Then he got married yeah. to her. Yeah, he's done. Yeah, he's really good. But uh, and and a real taskmaster, from what I understand. I mean, he's, yeah. And Mutt uh, Lang was with ACDC for quite a while, and that uh, yeah. this was their last album with him. Yeah. And I think that's when. Uh, no, what did, what did he do? No, that's what, yeah. He went over to uh, Def Leppard. Yeah. Then we have the Rolling Stones tattoo you. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I have a weird thing with the Rolling Stones, you know what I mean? Like, Charlie Watts, awesome. Yeah. Rest in peace, dude. Um, yeah. I, you know, I'm a Beatles guy. I'm not a Stones guy. I like some, oh, of, their, I like some of their yeah. songs. But I'm the opposite, brother. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm, I don't know. You know, the, uh, you know, the Beatles, I mean, for me, I get it. And, and, and I bow to them. I mean, the, the body of work they created, and I, I think their career, their, the peak of their career was about six years long, I think, if I remember here. Yeah, correctly. they recorded for six years together, yeah. Amazing body of work. But maybe it's just the old metal guy in me. They're just, uh, you know, I, if I'm in the right mood, certain songs, you know, Eleanor Rigby, yeah. uh, Rigby, I'm sorry, I'm slurring. <laughs> um uh, di- di- different ones, you know. Uh, you know, I can get with, but uh, the Stones were a little bit raw, or more raw, you know, and, and 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 kind of more up my alley. I think when I when I think about those two bands, nice. Well, and Keith, man, I. You know what I'm saying? That guy. That yeah. guy. <laughs> I don't think he's ever gonna die, brother. Yeah. No, I, you know, and here's the thing: I'm I'm more of a fan of the people in the Rolling Stones than the Rolling Stones. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like personally, like Charlie Watts, always a class act, fucking dude. Yeah. And Originally he, a jazz dude. Drummer. He yeah, and he had the best job, and he was like the the, the coolest guy in the room, man. Best dressed, fucking mm-hmm. coolest guy in the room. But always, yeah. always a cool guy to watch because he got a lot of attention just by being still. You know, yeah, and he was just a in the pocket, straightforward drummer. You know, no flash. No yeah, thrills. service the song, man. Hold you it know, down. You know, find the groove, get in the pocket. That's where it's at. You know, but uh, I mean, there's some good. You know, the hang fires on here. Start me up, which is a great song. Some girls. Oh, yeah. uh, it's not like I don't. I'm, I respect the Rolling Stones. I just. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, hey, it's it's a taste thing, you know. Everybody yeah, when you time. need, you know, 23 people on stage with you doing the work of five musicians on an album, then come on. <laughs> you know, but, uh, 
you know, I give them props. They brought a lot of uh, blues guys to the front. You know, mud. They uh, did a totally. Yeah, they did a solid with Muddy Waters and you know, mm-hmm. and a bunch of other guys. Well, you know, all those guys. English cats, man. The American blues. I mean, they, you know, they taught us about American blues and the the, the irony of that, yeah. right? You know, but they yeah. were like all about it, man. In the sixties, yeah. Yeah, man. I live right and, off and of Muddy uh, and all the all the big, you know, the blues guys. I mean, like that's really where their career started. I mean, they flew to England and they were like selling shit out over there, you know, when they couldn't get, yeah. Yeah. The street, the main street right over here is, uh, muddy waters Boulevard. Yeah. Pretty cool. You know, totally. Uh, yeah. So all those guys, the stones clapped and all those guys would like be in the neighborhood and you'd hear all these stories when you're a kid. The rolling stones were just in. Yeah. You know, dude, Eric clapped and they fucking, they went, you know, (laughs) Some kids are going to a party and then fucking across the street, they fucking walk and then, you know, they're jamming in Muddy's garage or something, you know? Yeah. Fucking... Yeah. yeah, the British yeah. dudes, man, they were <clears throat> they were all about it. All about the blues. Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, but, uh, yeah, Stones, you know, yeah, I could do without them, but, you know. Right. I, I get it that people like them. And, uh, of course, this is the... Uh, Seems to be the favorite album of music. Um, when musicians talk about Van Halen, this seems to be their favorite. And this is a Van Halen Fair Warning. Ah, oh, fantastic record. Dude, Mean Street. Wow. Yeah. Bum, 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 bum. Dude, what a great riff, man. Unchained, of course. <laughs> uh, hear about it later. And This is yep. kind of a, like a creepy song to me. It's like everyone, like, you know, had a couple of shots of whiskey, took a couple of of beers and like popped a couple of Valium and just were like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. But, uh, you know, then, uh, your favorite album, uh, lover boy with the red leather pants. <laughs> I gotta admit, I never really could get yeah. down with the boy too much. Now here's an album that was very important in the formation of my uh, musical um, appreciation, shall we say. Joan Jett and the Blackhearts, I Love Rock and Roll. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Joan Jett is the queen of rock, man. She's yeah. just, there's, you know, there's no one like her, never going to be anyone like her. That was one of my probably, uh, my in my first five records was one of those, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, probably the first five that I ever owned that was in there. Yeah, I've seen Joan Jett in concert uh, uh, 12 or 13 times. Oh, wow. Yeah. I've never gotten to see her, but... Uh, yeah, oh, she's awesome, man. She's fantastic, yeah. Yeah, and Seth was a huge Joan Jett fan. We've seen her a few times. Nice. And the, and the So the first time... Uh, he was like, uh, yeah, it was his first tenth birthday. So Joan Jett's playing like the weekend of his birthday. I'm like, okay, you know, it's in Joliet. You know, it's you know, it's kind of rednecky out that way. Blah blah blah. You know, you know, people out there. It's gonna be pretty cool. This that and the other. No big deal. Nothing to worry about. And then it fucking pours that day, <laughs> and I'm like, dude, why would it not? I'm like a bunch of fucking drunk fucks at a fucking i'm like no way you know because it was like a street fair kind of a thing it wasn't uh just a show right you know it was like a well, you know county fair type. and i'm like no dude i'm like if you were 15 i'd take you for the rock and roll moment in the rain in the mud but you're 10 <laughs> right. and shit can get weird you know sometimes you know yeah, yeah. i'm like uh so he's like, okay so i'm like but he's playing at harvest days in like three weeks He's like, oh, I'm like, yeah, so we can go there. I said, you know, just so you know, I said, you know, our friends, Jimmy and Denny. He's like, yeah. I'm like, well, you know how they're married. They're married and they're together, right? He's like, yeah. I'm like, well, that's kind of like a celebration of um, a bunch of their friends and people that, you know, you would know that I would know. And it's like a celebration, but they're all people who, you know, everyone da da da. And he's like, oh, okay, whatever. So we go there, and Seth is one of two kids in the whole 
like Harvest Day, like celebrate, you know, streets, street fairs and, you know, food vendors and all that shit. Sure. Dude, no kids. So it's all, you know, LGBTQ, you know, and which is well, fine, you know, I have no problem. So we're down there and, you know, we're waiting to see Joan and, you know, as soon as I walk up, of course, this like chick grabs us. We're like, hey, blah, blah, and all of a sudden we're in like the second row. Oh, nice. You know, so uh, Seth made this, uh, uh, he had a hat and he made like a I Love Joan Jet on it with like black marker and shit. So I mm-hmm. put him up on my shoulders for like just like 20 seconds so Joan could see him and kind of wink at him. You know what I mean? That'd get him down. Well, someone had thrown a bottle of water and hit Seth in the head. Oh. Right? And Seth was like, what the fuck? You know, he's dead. So I, I get him down. And uh, you hear like, who fucking threw the bottle at the fucking kid? Right? And I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God. Off, huh? Dude. Uh, it was the funniest. You know, it was, you know, it was, it was a plastic water bottle, half filled. It didn't hurt. But it's still bullshit right. that you would throw something at a kid. Right. Dude, this crowd fucking rocked. I've never seen anyone get hissed. Dude, everyone's like, fucking the whole concert, dude. Like, they, like, escorted her. They're like, you are not going to be in this, you know, we do not take that here. Dude, that was the fucking best. Yeah, it walked her out, huh? Oh, oh, yeah. Like, immediately, like, popping a pimple. They're like, get out. You know, I don't think so. But, uh, yeah, that was a great show. So then um, we're right up at at first row, because and then security, Joan comes out to do the encore. And he's like, hey, hand me your kid. I'm like, what? <laughs> hand me your kid. You know? He's like, yeah, I'll sit him on stage for the encore. I'm like, get the fuck Oops. out, really? He's like, yeah, man. So, fucking, I'm like, Seth, he's going to put you on stage. Boom, I hand him over. And Seth sat down, and he got to watch Joan Jett do her whole encore sitting on stage. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so I got, you know, pictures of that on the Facebook. But, you know, for 10 years old, that was pretty cool. Yeah, that's a good start right there. Yeah, but Joan Jett's always, you know, she does what she does, man. She's not fucking Ingve. She's yeah. not Beethoven. She's not going to put out a song of fucking, you know, but classical. But it's all attitude, man. It's rock and roll attitude, man. Kind of like a little tinge Joan of Jett, dude, you fucking, Joan yeah. Jett will kick you in the fucking face. Oh, yeah. She's like, listen to this. Biff! You're like, oh, it's not complicated music. You're like, no, it's not supposed to be. It's rock and roll, baby. Yeah, it's supposed to be fun, man. Yeah, that's you all know? it is. And I always it have to be complicated, <clears throat> dude. And they have great crowds at Joan Jett shows, man. Yeah, everyone's always cool. Uh, Cheap Trick, I've seen fourteen times. Oh, what a band, man! Yeah, I'm telling. And uh, our buddy Rob, he just uh, took some pictures of Cheap Trick uh, last week. Sure did in New York City. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then we have. Uh, I was never a big Police fan. Were you? Oh, I, you know what? Ghost I will in the tell machine. You, back in the day when I was young, I was not because I was like all metal. But I absolutely love them now. I mean, now that I've uh, my my taste has matured a little bit. Yeah, well, I can uh, appreciate the police. I just wasn't a, at that time because I I don't like anything that's huge at the time. I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't then, you know, like I said, because it was to me that was just pop back yeah. in the day, right? But now, you know, at my age now, I've been, and oddly enough, I just listened to, uh, recently I listened to an uh, interview with Sting talking about the old days, you know, um, yeah. how he started. Um, it was kind of like a Yeah, dude, everything she does thing. is magic. That song is fucking amazing. Yeah, but you know, when I go back now and I listen, uh, really, really great shit, man. Uh, the songwriting was solid. Stuart Copeland, what a drummer. Oh, like, for sure, uh, yeah. Yeah, um, and for a three piece, I mean, you know, and, and let's, let's there's face something it, about man, trios, man. There's just something about trios, especially from the 70s. They're just fucking, yeah, yeah, dude. And and like Sting's voice, I mean, say what you want, you know, maybe people, you know, like you know, like uh, you know, Fields of Gold or whatever, you know, maybe people are sick of like you know, the AOR, you know, hits and all that, but you know what, that guy, you hear that voice, you know, it's him. I mean, he's unmistakably him, oh, for sure. Um, and just really a brilliant, brilliant musician. Um, you know, during that interview, he was, it was just like him sitting there with an acoustic guitar, just doing some of the hits off the cuff. And what, what grabbed me was like, even in the stripped down form with just him playing acoustic and singing them. And sometimes like, 
manipulating the melodies like a little bit differently than you remembered on my radio it was still just great great stuff you know yeah um so yeah i got i got crazy respect for that band for sure. right totally totally you know they actually when they started out they really uh wanted to be a punk band yeah which well, was kind punk, of surprising, yeah, you know, punk, but they yeah. just sort of evolved into what they were, you know, what they became. Oh, well, yeah, they mashed up punk and, you know, tried to be reggae. Yeah, yeah. But people didn't, they, you know, suburban kids didn't under, get that part of it because they yeah. didn't know what reggae was. But I think uh, another great example of, you know, a band being the sum of its parts, you know, and yeah. then you got three different guys that came together and just uh, basically created a you know, their own sound. I mean, their own thing, you know? Yeah. But so. weird, but weird, you know, m- much like the stones bringing, uh, the attention to certain type of music, you know, the blues police brought a lot of people. What is that? What, what's reggae for right. people who didn't know? I mean, I knew what reggae was, but yeah, you know, now, see, I really, a didn't. lot of the people were in like, I saw charts and shit that I didn't know it was, you know, yeah, I mean the only right I, I, to be honest with you, I do. You know, I hadn't really been exposed to reggae other than the flavor of it through bands like that at the time. Yeah, you know? Clapton was doing some of it. Um, yeah, a uh, little bit of uh, Steve Miller was doing kind. Of, um, yeah, there's a few, but we're getting the flavors. But mm-hmm. you know, it's not like they were playing Bob Marley all the time, or right, right, yeah. But there, Peter, there was the or, influence of it, you know. Yeah. For sure. Then we had uh, Billy Idol with Don't Stop. Oh, yeah. With with great hits such as Money Money, re-recorded yeah. one song by his old band and retooled another with Dancing With Myself. <laughs> you know, Steve Stevens, man, the guitar player. Is, I'm a huge Steve Stevens fan. That guy. Yeah, have you I, seen him lately, dude? He's got like a pumpkin head. Yeah, but you know what, man, that guy. He can know, play like a motherfucker. You know. For anybody that hasn't done a deep dive into Steve's playing, that guy, you ought to hear him play flamenco. Yeah, for sure. He's a monster, monster guitar player. You know, and I mean, if you've never listened to anything but like, yeah, it seems like a cool guy. Hits, you wouldn't know it necessarily, but that guy is is no joke. Yeah, well, he's had a, you know solo out. He was with Vince Neil for a while, and then mm-hmm. you know, but, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he's always a solid player. I mean, you know, there was never ever, you know, he seemed to be the guy in that band who could play. Not yeah. that other one, not that anyone else couldn't. That's not what I mean. But like he was the standout, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, he's. You know, because people are used to Eddie Van Halen, they see him, and everyone's like, oh, "Okay, all right, mm-hmm. he can hold it." You know, great, yeah. great player. And even a lot of his solo stuff, man, like even, you know, I dug like uh, the Atomic Playboy stuff he did back. Yeah, that was really good. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I like that version. I think I said eight-ish ladies. I meant to say latest. Latest 80s. Lamish. Lamish 80s. Lamish 80s. Where's that cricket? Hey, Rob, where's the cricket? Rob, where's the cricket? Where's Carl? Cricket. Yeah. Then we have uh, ZZ Top El Loco. Oh my god! With pearl necklace, t- uh, tube snake boogie. Yep. Uh huh. The Reverend man, Billy. What can you say? Yeah, it sucks. Dusty's gone for sure. Yeah, but it was man, one of the monsters, I was one of the monsters well, for sure. That was one of the uh, first episodes of uh, Creativity. Was it? Yeah. Yep. It was a salute to Dusty Hill. Oh, Dusty, yeah. Actually, the day, uh, the night before he passed away, they were supposed to play here in my my town, like two miles from my house. Yeah, um, I know. I but did. obviously had to cancel, you know. Right. Totally. So, Snake Eyed again, man. I still haven't seen him. Been dying to see him my whole life. But, uh, you know, hopefully I'll get a chance. Just when they thought I was out, they pulled me back in. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh... Here's another musician that uh, I knew around from like 1978 or whatever, 78, 79, I think, the first album that I saw. Um, I wasn't into him when he was out. I mean, I 
respected the guy because I knew he played 17 fucking instruments and shit. And like, you know, he could sing his ass off. He could play. I just was into other things like Van Halen and, you know, Kiss and, you know, whatever, Zeppelin and, you know, just wasn't my thing. And plus all the chicks were listening to Prince, you know, but uh, 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 Prince's uh, Controversy, which had Dirty Mind, uh, Annie Christian, you know, I really can't do talk. I can't talk much about that album because I'm not familiar with it, but... uh, yeah, I'm not. He's either, a fucking monster, dude. I'm a huge like I I will go down rabbit holes now and spend a couple hours just watching Prince play. Like he did the version of play uh play that funky music white boy oh, for yeah. one of his uh uh, uh finales of a show. Yeah, the wild cherry tune. Dude. Yeah, it's dude, like he's a, a 15 monster. minute version monster. of it and dude, he's a monster guitar player. Um, he, guitar, bass, I mean, you know, he did it all. Yeah, but here's the thing, to be one of the best guitar players ever yeah. and to be one of the best songwriters ever and to be one of the best performers ever and Absolutely, to be yeah. one of the best singers ever, dude, mm-hmm. that the, plus the other instrument. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like that's like obscene. Like that is so fucking. You know how lucky were we to be here? You know. Yeah, and see that guy. Yeah, totally. You know when he, uh, you know, before he ever like took off, I, I I've uh, listened to interviews with C. Lukather, you know, talking about yeah, you know, Lukather was a monster in L. A. doing the sessions on the day back before. You know, yeah, he was at his best stuff. friend. Mm-hmm. And he talks about like doing these sessions at like you know I think it was like Sunset Sound or one of the big studios in yeah. L.A. Yeah. And uh, he actually ran into Prince. Prince was like actually working there, you know, as an engineer or an mm-hmm. assistant or something. And um, you know he he saw the guy around. He said he was a little <laughs> standoffish or you know kind of weird, like staring him down and stuff. And he said then like you know handful of years later the guy's like the you know, biggest you know pop star on the planet you know right uh but yeah he was uh he was definitely motivated man he was all about it you know right um i'm looking this up really quick here um i had watched sunset sound has a great um podcast and a channel on youtube yeah and uh so I, I, I'm there frequently watching about, they do a lot of stuff on Van Halen and stuff. And, but Prince sure. went there and they had, um, Peggy McCreary mm-hmm. on and she was Prince's engineer for, you know, a solid decade at least. Right. And, uh, uh, oh, seven years. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah. So she tells all these stories and stuff and she was one of the first people, uh, first females to get into, uh, you know, engineering at that level. Sure. And yeah. she basically knocked the door down for a bunch of people. But they have some really good, uh, there's multiple podcasts and print stories and how they recorded it and how he would write and all types of weird shit. And, yeah. You know, but uh, yeah, he was just one of those, you know, like Einstein and Nikola Tesla, one of those people you just get yeah. out of. Well, you know, in, in, in Paisley Park, you know, up there in the Twin Cities up there, I mean, you know, he um, built a world-class facility up there, apparently. You know, I, I've heard uh, back when we were in school, you know, one of the audio teachers had told me that um, I think, if I remember correctly, the story was that, you know, one of the rooms in his, his studio complex up there that he had imported some kind of wood from Africa, you know, for the walls. And they spent like a million dollars on just like the, you know, the wall treatments in, in, in the one studio. You know, I guess it, I've never seen it, uh, but I've heard it was quite a place up there, you know. Yeah. Well, you got to get the colors right. Now. <laughs> it's all about the palette, brother. That's right. Yeah, and you got to be comfortable if you're going to create. You got the money. It's going to be right off anyway. It's a studio. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, but... uh yeah, he was he was amazing, man. Yep, no doubt. But uh, okay, moving on. We have ooh, how many T-shirts this has sold? I have no idea, but they could probably uh, retire just on this image alone. And that's uh, Iron Maiden Killers. Yeah, oh, absolutely. That's no, that, those are my boys there. Yeah, 
But yeah, uh, what an album! Yeah, so talk a little bit about Maiden. Man, I'm telling you, like, uh, if I'm not too drunk <laughs> and too old, I think uh, wasn't Paul Diano still singing at that point? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty yeah, sure. yeah, 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 yeah. Pretty sure, right? It was the Studio Swan song. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, that was, that was like, uh, you know. And dude, that is so like now looking back on it is so like disassociated to me. Yeah. Because Iron Maiden's Dickinson, you know what I mean? Right. That's so bizarre. Those, those Deanno years though, Deanno had that like New York City kind of edge to him, you know what I mean? And and it kind of worked. And, you know, like. If you think about it, like Maiden in the early years, you know, that's when like the punk thing was really big. It was like, I mean, that was like the only thing that was going on in England at the time, you know? Right. Um, Late 70s, early 80s when they were like, you know, kind of hashing it out. So, you know, uh, that may have, I mean, this is just my opinion. I don't know. What what the hell do I know? But, you know, Deanna with that that sort of New York kind of bite to him, maybe that sort of helped bridge the gap. You know, but between the punk and metal thing, you know, you know I mean, because metal was kind of just taken off in early '80s, you know, late '70s, early '80s. So, yeah. um, I mean, you know, for my money, I think maybe you know, Deanna might have helped them sort of like kind of bust through. Yeah. You know, when, when punk was kind of ruling the world, you know. For sure. But uh, yeah, I wasn't into Maiden until later. Mm. in life that was you know everyone i'm like dude you know priest too like in high i wasn't into priest i liked priest yeah i like some made but like like dude everywhere i went maiden and priest maiden and priest and i was like okay I'm, i want something with some more i mean all that stuff's great but you know the girls like the stuff you could kind of you know move to a little bit so was, right shake uh, your ass too but. yeah i'll uh, go hang out where they're hanging out you know man i saw i saw maiden in uh i think it was probably around 85 86 it was the world slavery tour and i'm telling you what man i was like I, still to this day i i still just deep dive maiden all the time um definitely one of my Top three favorite bands. Yeah, and Paul Diano's had some uh, major health is- uh, health health issues, and uh, yes, he's had, got to have like some surgeries and stuff. He's like wheelchair bound. Yeah, he's got some serious things going on there, and we wish Who's him well. Stuff? Paul Diano. Oh, does he? Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I mean, I, I I've not uh, heard much of him. You know, in, in in a lot of years, I didn't know what what he was up to or what's going on with him. Yeah. So move but, uh, So the next album up here, we have uh, Stevie Nicks Belladonna. Oh, Stevie, man, that mm-hmm. voice, huh? No, oh, totally. Yeah, dude. And this is uh, dude. This song is just fucking amazing. Stop dragging my heart around with Tom Petty. Oh, fantastic, man! Another massive classic, uh, yeah. Leather and Lace. With Don, oh yeah, with uh, Don with, Henley. With Don Henley. Yeah. And, Absolutely. Uh, the Edge of Seventeen. Great. Dude, just great, to have, I mean, great. those three massive songs on one album. Right. Plus, like, After the Glitter Fades and Outside the Rains, and there's some other tunes in there, but... Yeah. yeah Stevie Nicks is, you know... Oh. Stevie Nicks. Looking, yeah, she's awesome. You know. And, uh, yeah, that's not a uh, slight in any way. No, and I mean, you know what, uh, even all the later, her later stuff, too, you know, just... Uh, even like the you know the the mellower stuff like uh, I'll tell you one of my favorites is uh, it's kind of a a tearjerker song but uh, has any anyone ever, has anyone written anything for you? Great tune, you dude. Know? That's funny that you mentioned that because um, I worked on this short film called Exactly That. Really? Well, it's called actually a song for you, but it was based on that song. Yeah. And um, it was Mark Ruffalo's first um, film appearance. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, this was produced for Disney Channel. Um, the executive producer of the film was Elton John and Fleetwood Mac's manager. Uh, we shot it at Orson Welles' old house. This is like tying a bunch of... That's funny that you mentioned it. And yeah. uh, um, 
it starred Mar- uh, Mark Ruffalo's best friend Mike, who was wheelchair bound. Oh wow! And basically, it, it's a uh, uh, half hour film about um, this guy Mike. He wanted to be a uh, composer, mm. and he's in a car, and he's had you know with his mom, and she was like from Falcon Crest or one of those shows, or whatever oh. Dynasty or whatever. I can't remember which one. Um, and they have a wreck. They have a car wreck because she was drunk, and you know she's in an insane asylum, and he's you know uh, wheelchair bound now. He's a you know uh, paraplegic, and so he still goes after his dream, and he becomes the songwriter. And so, like the song that he writes about his whole experience is the Stevie Nicks song, and and it ends with Stevie Nicks in the studio singing that wow. song. So, <laughs> we're at where yeah. So we're at the um, uh, house of the manager, and in the garage is a recording studio, and that's where we're shooting this, you know, the final scene of the, the short film. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, like, hey Vince, go you know, go run and grab Stevie. Tell her you know we got da da da. So I go in there, and uh, on the screen is Beavis and Butthead. You're kidding. No, so there's a bunch of people, you know, Stevie, and I think her sister was there, and, you know, a couple other people. And I'm like, hey, Stevie, you know, basically you're on a five, you know, you got to start making it towards the studio. And, <laughs> dude, I, I'm trying to control myself from laughing because she's going, pointing at the screen. All they need is to be loved. <laughs> like Beavis and Butthead. She's like, look at that. And she was like getting upset because they were like, oh, <laughs> and like totally making fun of shit. And like, she's like, all they need is to be loved. That's all. They'd be nice guys. All they needed to be. Dude, it was fucking hilarious. So then I'm like, okay. So then it took, uh, Hypothetically, it may have taken a couple of us to um, make sure she could walk the 50 feet from the house to the garage. <laughs> right. But uh, let me tell you something. Yeah, you know, she, there's a, on, there's a reason why legends are legends. And I don't get, begrudge anyone, creative or not, you know, if they partake in alcohol or something. or You know, if you're a creative or if you have an issue... You know, some people, you know, it overtakes and, you know, we don't want that to happen to people. But let me, for sake of clarity, I just wanted to mention that. So you have Stevie. So she might be a little altered. The second she hits her mark and we go and in five, boom. She's on it. Fucking Stevie Nicks is in the fucking room. Yep. And dude, wow! And it was like just short, but I was like, "Holy shit!" Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, you know she's... what I mean? Because I've seen at that point, I'd seen a bunch of actors and da 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 when they turn it on, but I'd never seen a musical legend turn it on. Mm-hmm. Like you know, I've seen a bunch of fucking bands try to turn it on or turn it on, but dude, that was you know bizarre. Yeah. That was like wow. Yeah, yeah, she's awesome, dude. So we like Stevie. Then another small band trio from Canada. Moving Pictures by Rush. Oh, God. I mean, Limelight, YYZ, Tom Sawyer. <laughs> you know, all on one album. Yeah. And I said album, not a download or a tape. Yeah. Dude, they let, streaming. Me, let me borrow your they A-track. Stream that album. What's that? I said they didn't stream that one. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, dude, they're monsters. Yeah, and Rush has a huge fan base unlike any others. Oh, yeah. Very uh, loyal. They were brilliant, no doubt. Neil Peart, man. Peart, Peart. Peart, However, Peart, however Peart. you pronounce it. <laughs> the professor. The professor, man. What a genius he was. Mm-hmm. And, uh... You know, we should, you know, Rush probably deserves its own show 
for sure. Absolutely, yeah. Well, it's cracking open another bush light there, are you, buddy? Yeah, you heard that, huh? Nice bush light. Jesus Christ. Hey, man, I'm telling you, I, you know, I love my big, heavy, imported beers, but, you know, diabetes, man, you got to damn... Nice. got to do what you got to do, right? Yeah. Don't be a quitter. Hey, I just drink irresponsibly less. <laughs> Jason's like doing the math. Mm-hmm. Hey, okay. You know, when I found out I had it probably a year and a half ago, I was like, you know, I, I'm like, uh uh-uh, uh, I'm not quitting drinking beer. Uh uh-uh. uh. Nice. <laughs> I'm just going to shift gears a little bit. Right. I'll go to light beer. I'll go to light beer. That you fixes know, everything. They don't put anything bad in the cheap stuff, do they? No. no. Certainly not. Yeah, so they piss in the vats. It's usually 10 minutes from the bathroom walk. <laughs> I want to switch to vodka soon, I think, though. Nice. Hey, you have to have life goals, man. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, did I mention? I don't know if I mentioned on air I was drinking uh, Lagunita's Hazy Wonder. Hazy Wonder? Is it an IPA? Yeah. And participating with the. Uh, my uh, pain relief and uh, all around Jovi. Psychological help. Yeah. Is uh, some pre rolls of uh, what do we have here today? Is Orange Kush Cake. Oh, now I have to ask, man. Uh, so, who is actually rolling the pre rolls? The pre roller. The pre roller? Who is it? <laughs> I mean, isn't that valuable information? Uh, no, no. There's, there, well, there's the bud tenders that you see at the dispensary. And if you have questions, you talk to a bud tender. And then there's so, people so who what, prepare no, this. Hold, hold on, hold on. You, you got to go slow. I have to understand. I have to wrap my brain around this because I'm in yeah. South Carolina and they just legalized tattooing about. An hour Eight ago, ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, so so it'll never be legal here, <laughs> right? In my lifetime, right, right, right. So, uh, so you actually have like stores. You have like a storefront that you, dude. Can go I got to. one that opened up. Like it's like a mile from my house. It's great. Yeah. So you just walk in like you're going to the deli to get some. Um, salami. not really. Um, <laughs> You know, walk me through it. Just, just give me like a little load, a little rundown. Okay, so you wake up and you're like, "Oh shit, I'm out of weed," and then you like, (laughs) and then you like. So what I do is, so I go online, I go to the website, and they order it, and you have to pay uh, with cash. You can't use a credit card. Okay. uh, Because it's still federally, you know, frowned upon, which is stupid. Uh, Most of the states have it, so it's. I mean, the majority of the country is with it but uh anyway so here's what you do so you go in there and then you go down to oh do you want what do you want do you want flour which is buds do you want you know do you want to get flour do you want to get edibles do you want to get tincture which are drops do you want to get so edibles edibles are like what like gummy bears you can get gummy bears chocolate um like uh, sports drink um tea um you can get oh, so you can like rubber. drink it? Yeah, dude. No shit. Yeah. Beer, wine. I mean, they don't have beer and wine here at this thing, but they're, right. you know, that's, you know, being made. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, and it's really good shit. And, like, you can dial it in for, like, you know, I have chronic pain and I don't take yeah. pharmaceuticals. So I do it for pain and I also do it for, cre- you know, um, this thing. This strain is also good for creativity and focus, you know. Nice. And uh, lessen anxiety, blah, blah, blah. So I can do one thing and not have to take four different fucking pills. Nice. You know, it's not, and I don't sit here and get fucking hammered, you know what I mean? Right, right. It's like right, I have right. a hit or two and I'm fucking good, you know? Yeah. But, uh, like, when we do the shows, I may have three or four, you know, but, you know, just because we're hanging out and stuff, we're not hurting anybody. And, uh, you know, but, you know, some people do do it for the high. That's, you know, obvious. But people drink, too. So anyone who frowns upon that and and drinks is a fucking moron. Hey, you listen, my old man, before he left this shitty world. No, I don't care how many goats he fucked, Jason. (laughs) He said, a man's got to have something. Yeah, oh, exactly. 
Yeah, and you know, you I'd rather do that than drink. Ended up straight. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah, I'd rather do that than drink. You know. Yeah, no, I'm not mad at you, man. No. Oh, I know, I know, but uh, you know, I'm glad it's legal, and it's creating a lot yeah, of jobs. Awesome. It's a great paying I mean, job, man. Like if you're, dude, if you're like snipping flowers at like grow, like, dude, that's like seventy five dollars an hour. No shit. Yeah, not a not a grow house. I mean, at farms. Yeah. Like a friend of mine's daughter was fucking snipping for fucking Chong, making like 70 bu- 75 bucks an hour. You know what I mean? Damn. <laughs> yeah. Where, where do I sign? Right. But, uh, yeah. So, yeah. So this is, uh, I got, uh, there's five pre-rolls in this. It came in a nice fancy little uh, tin package there. Right on. But, uh, yeah, you know. Well, when I retire from the trucking industry, maybe I'll move to Illinois. How about that? Right, right. Yeah, when we have, when we have our uh, compound studio somewhere. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now we move on to another classic album, which started a whole new, like, um, I, this is like when metal pivoted and it got a little bit more commercial. No, a lot more commercial, but even though the person bringing the commerciality to it was frowned upon, and that's... Ladies and gentlemen, Ozzy Osbourne, Diary of a Madman. Fantastic. Dude, what? Randy Rhodes fucking shows up out of nowhere. Yeah, dude. You know, even, not really, but, you know. Well, you know, he was known in the L.A. scene, you know, playing with Quiet Riot. Yeah, well, Quiet Riot had put out two albums, but it was only in Japan, and they didn't do well. Right. But they got fucked the way that that, you know, that all happened. And then basically Ozzy took all of Quiet Riot's band. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like, right? dude, Rudy I and, can't uh, even imagine Randy. Kevin DeBrow at that point going, are you fucking what? Yeah, yeah, like, what am I going to do now? Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I guess uh, Rudy Sarzo is back in Quiet Riot because there's yeah. no original members left, which is weird. I don't know how they yeah. did Yeah, well, you know, Frankie just passed away here not too long ago. Yeah, uh, Mr. Benerly. Um So uh, I think I think Rudy, you know, felt like, you know, he kind of owed it to, to Frankie to kind of keep it going, you know. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, so we had Flying High again, Believer, Over the Mountain. Uh, yeah, Over the Mountain, what a song, man. Right. I mean, that's a show opener right there, right? Right. With that guitar riff. I mean, that's like, you know, totally. gets, them up, gets them up on their feet, you know? Absolutely. And, you know, this is a good year for um, metal f- albums when it started to change, because right after that, we have Def Leppard High and Dry, mm, which is yeah. before they really exploded, but they're like on the way. But I have to tell you, man, I think that's probably like my favorite. Yeah, it's a great album. Record. Yeah, it was just, uh, you know, they still had like, you know, Pete Willis and Steve Clark. I think it's before Phil Collin came in. Yeah. And that's against Phil. I mean, great player. But they just had, it was just a little more raw. Yeah, you know they were kids. I, mean? I, I kind of loved that rawness of that album. Oh, you know? totally. Yeah. You know, they, you know, during the, the later years, you know, when Mutt produced and all that, they got a little, you know, like, yeah, a little overproduced, you know what I mean? I mean, I still dug yeah, it. Yeah, that was Mutt Lang's but, doing it. Yeah, high and dry, though. I mean, like, uh, you know, just, man, less Paul Sue Marshalls, you know? I mean, he, yeah. what can you say about that, you know? Yeah, and to me, Def Leppard will always be one of the coolest bands simply because when uh, there was an accident in the band, they figured it out and moved forward. Sure, yeah. You know, Rick, there was like, Rick well, what do you mean? No, man. you're the drummer, dude. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Dude, coolest thing like ever in rock and roll, I think, in my opinion. Oh yeah. Uh, so yep. yeah, right after that we had uh, Motley Crue's "Too Fast for Love," which is another fucking uh, great album. I love this album, dude. Another raw album that just oh, holds dude, it. Dude, live wire. Merry Go Round is another great song. PC Your Action, dude. The whole yeah. Yeah, that album kills, man. I love it. Yeah, and then they mirrored the Stones album. With the crotch you know, and, and I'll tell you one thing I love about that record too is, is you can tell, you know, it's, I mean, new band didn't have a budget, you know, no money. They just did what they could, what they could afford. Mm-hmm. But 
it's just raw and nasty. It's great. You know? Right. And I that's... just finished uh, Nikki's new book, uh, The First 21. Oh, nice. How yeah, I Became Nikki Six. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was good. It was good stuff. Yeah, I like Nikki. Oh, man, he's a, he's a monster. So to the answer, or the answer to uh, Diary of a Madman, we have the insanity-themed Mob Rules by Black Sabbath entering uh, Ronnie James Dio on the mic. Love it. Which is a totally different it. band, just like Van Halen with between Sammy and Dave, two different bands. You know, mm. they totally changed. You know, when, when Dio entered, it was a wholly, totally different thing. Yeah, but you know what? I love Sabbath all through all the eras. I even dug the record they did with Ian Gillian singing, you know, 79. Yeah, yeah they had a know. weird thing there where they, you know, it's too bad they couldn't get it together. Mm hmm. But you know, Dio, I mean, uh, you know, I did a, a Sabbath record in, uh, I think it was 91, uh, the Dehumanizer tour. We recorded them in Tampa. And, uh, I got to meet and hang with Ronnie for a while, and he was like the coolest dude, man. Like, you know, just so down to earth. Um, and I was a huge Dio fan already, you know, from you know from his solo stuff, even. Yeah. You know, and and uh, but no, I always love Ronnie, man, for sure. Nice. Nice. So we have Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers with Hard Promises. Great. Which was the follow up to. Uh, Damn the Torpedoes, which is a fucking great album. Yep. I just, you know, yeah. I'll do a, we'll, we should do a show on Tom Petty at some point. Uh, the documentary yeah, yeah. that just came out. What was a songwriter, right? I mean, oh, for you sure. Know, best just, band, his... one of the best bands ever. Yeah. Like, as yeah. a band, like, people don't understand. Oh, oh yeah, people, don't... no, like, you, they could play anything. Yeah. yeah. They weren't, uh, oh, we can play only this, you know, whatever our music is. No. They can play yeah. literally anything. Unbelievable. Yeah. Mike Campbell, monster guitar player. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then the uh, uh, the piano player forever. Uh, what's his name? Anyway, but uh, moving on. Yeah, so we have uh, Billy Squire, Don't Say No. That was a pretty huge album at the time. Sure, sure was in the day, yeah. Lonely is the Night and The Stroke. I wonder if those the two stroke. songs are yeah. related. Yeah. Yeah, he made some dough on that, no doubt. Just a little bit, and it also um, destroyed his career in a, in the way. Yeah. Just because I'll of the get... video, they put him in a pink shirt, you know. <laughs> Seriously, as stupid as that is, you know, fucking what? You know. But uh, mm-hmm. for people who are musicians, they didn't think that, but the general public, I guess, got turned off by it. I don't know why. But, uh, yeah, he was... Uh, you know, there was murmurs at one point that Billy Squire was going to take over for David Lee Roth. Really? Yeah. Can you imagine what Van Halen would have sounded like with Billy Squire? Dude, that'd be badass. Huh. I didn't know that. You know? Mm-hmm. Yes. Then we have Abacadab by Genesis. No Reply at All. Huge fucking song. This is like when Genesis was starting to like just own the world for like a solid, you know, five or six years. Right. Yeah. Dude, I don't even remember these people. Squeeze, East Side Story. Yeah, vaguely. I don't know. What was the big hit on that one? Tempted. uh, Is that Love? It was co-produced by Elvis Costello. Mm. Then we have uh, Toto, Turn Back. Oh, yeah, Toto, man. See, look at yeah, What a monster a player band. that guy is. Yeah, that is a great band. Jeff Porcaro on drums. Oof. Yeah, this is right before they turned it around with Blockbuster Toto for the next year. <laughs> then Rush exits stage left again. Uh, Second, yeah, yeah, okay, there's a live album. But, uh, yeah, let's see. Oh, then we have uh, The Who Face Dances. With You Better You Bet, Another Tricky oh, Day, The yeah. Quiet One. Dude, The Who, Great. those guys were just fucking monsters. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Legends, man. You know, it's weird because, like, when the new Hugh, Hugh when the new Who music came out in, like, uh, you know, like, talking junior high, it's like, new Who? And now it's like, well, yeah, that's old Who, like, almost classic Who movie or music. You know what yeah. I mean? You're like, 
Sure. I don't know. It's just weird that the stuff that you remember out as new is now like legendary. It's just kind of weird. Yeah. But because uh, they've been around since, you know, sand. Six. Yeah. Then we have uh, Songs in the Attic by Billy Joel. I'm not real familiar with that one. Yeah, that was Captain Jack, uh, The Ballad of Billy the Kid, Say Goodbye to Hollywood. Hmm. It was a slower album. This is before, right before the next one that kicked off. Then we have uh, Daryl Hall and John Oates, Private Eyes. Uh, yeah, well, also one of my early records. They're Watching You. Yep. Um, Daryl Hall, well, both the guys are really good, but uh, Daryl Hall, the, the show that he has live at Daryl's house is really Oh, Daryl's house, yeah, it's great stuff. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's just cool to great see. You know. Yeah. Actually, you know, you know, the episode with, with Billy Gibbons at Daryl's house is fantastic, too, if anybody hasn't seen that one. Which one? Uh, Billy Gibbons from ZZ Top when he was on Daryl's house. Oh, yeah, for sure. That, yeah. yeah, it's it was awesome. To see him digging a 12-piece band playing uh, ZZ songs. Yeah, I'll tell you another one I liked was uh, Grace Potter yeah. from, you know, yeah, well, you know, Grace Potter. But, uh, and uh, Joe Walsh was another great one. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, Joe was on Daryl's house? I didn't see that one. Oh, yeah. Oh, I need to check that out. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to skip play from like here to here, and then just like, you know, you <laughs> dude, can play around and just figure it out, man. It'll be cool. It's good. Yeah, it's good. Dude, dude, I love Joe Walsh, man. I love him, man. What a monster he is. All man. my musical roads lead back to Joe Walsh, dude. Yep. It's that guy. I love that dude. What a what a player he is. Yeah. I'm telling you. So the Hall and Oates, we have the it was a kiss on my list. Uh, mm-hmm. You've lo- okay. Which was their soulful take on you've lost that love and feeling. Then Private Eyes was on there. Yeah, I can't go for that. Did it mm-hmm. in a minute. I mean, dude, these guys are writing hits every time they sneezed, man. Yeah, yeah they were they like, top of their game back in the day. Yeah. And then uh, we had another live album from Nuge, Intensities in Ten Cities. Mm-hmm. Blue Oyster Cult, Fire of the Unknown Origin. Oh, yeah. Which we have uh, Burning for You. Great song. Oh, yeah. Joan Crawford, Heavy Metal, The Black and the yep. Silver. Then we have another trio, Canadian, Allied Forces by Triumph. Triumph, my God. I that love, band. love, love Triumph. Oh, dude. my God, dude. Yeah, that band is amazing. I love that band. Mm-hmm. Yep. And Allied Forces, man, like their they're best record, in my opinion. You know. Yeah, Fight the Good Fight was on that one. Oh, yeah. Killer and... and uh, um, which one was Lay It on, lay, uh... lay it on the Line, right? Yeah. Yeah. Was that on that record, too? I'm not sure. Yeah, Rick Emmett, man, Gil Moore, Mike Levine, oh. all monsters. Another, another killer Canadian trio, you know? Totally. Totally. And uh, then we get to the Jake Isles band, Freeze Frame. Right, big big hit for Dude, that was I was never huge. a big fan yeah. myself, but... I love Jake Giles, man. You did? Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because his earlier stuff was like totally bluesy, man. You should check it out. Oh, okay. Well, you have to maybe I'll yeah, that, I mean, he that. wasn't a pop that just happened that, you know, whatever the times. But, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, Freeze Frame, Centerfold. Dude, that was so huge. And I used to uh, go to the roller rink a lot at that time. Yeah. So I was like, you know, between fifth. Uh, no, that was like seventh grade. And uh, did you have braces on when you were skating? Mm. No, I waited till I was an awkward uh, freshman. <laughs> to get braces. Yeah. yeah, no. Did you wear like Mark and Mindy socks on no. your skates? No, 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 no. You did not, dude. I was a good skater, man. I hate you. Could you go backwards? It was fun. Fuck yeah, dude. I could go backwards. Oh, I could dance shit. the whole Yeah, I couldn't do that, man. I'd, I'd crack my head open. Yeah, well, that explains it. Mm-hmm. You know, well, when you're cranium heavy, you know. Yeah, and my knuckles whack. dragging and like yeah. going under the wheels, you know, to me, knocking myself over. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> ow. 
Yeah. Damn it. Ouch. What? what the hell was that? Then we have uh, another ticket with Clapton, which was uh, Blow by Blow was on there. Uh, Albert Lee was also on guitar. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I Can't Stand It was another tune. Mm-hmm. And then we have the Kinks, Give the People What They Want. Yeah. Lola. Lola, yeah. Lola man. Look at this. One of the great rock and roll songs. Man. Oh, totally. Toots. Toots and the goats. And could they come out with that song now? Or would they have to be Lola in order to write the song Lola? That's Well, you know what? Stupid. I mean, I'm surprised Lola hasn't be, hasn't had like a second round of the charts now, to be honest with you. Right. I mean, it was ahead of its time, right? You know? For sure. Yeah. yeah then you, you know, can go uh, back Ace to really is, Triumph. Is, uh, Ace on his latest record did a cover of Lola. It's pretty good. Dude, I'm loving Ace's new shit now that he's... Like, oh, yeah, he's killing it, man. Yeah. He's still got it. That's me opening up another Bruja. Another Lagunitas. Lagunitas. Yeah, Ace is... Uh, I'm telling you what, man. He's got his shit together these days, man. He's he's playing, like, better than ever, you know? Yeah. No doubt. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, Kiss are just... If I can call it a day already, don't even worry about the rest of the tour. Just, you know... Yeah, they're just cash and checks, aren't they? Yeah, at this point. Yep. Unfortunately. Rainbow, Difficult to Cure. This is... Oh, uh, yeah. It's a good one. Joel and Turner coming in to replace Graham Bonnet. Mm-hmm. I think Cozy Powell was maybe still drumming at that time. I believe Some so. Time. Yeah, great, great drummer. Yeah. That I Surrender, Difficult to Cure, Spotlight Kid. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have Journey Captured, which I don't know, at that point captured. people were pretty much over Journey. I don't know why. Right, was. what was on that album? I'm trying to get to um, stir my memory on that one. A lot of songs that when you start playing them, girls go, Oh my god! Um, <laughs> right, Departure. Okay. This is only what I'm reading off the thing here from ultimateclassicrock.com. Uh, then we have Funkadelic, The Electric Spanking of War Babies, which was a George Clinton era. Oh, I'm not familiar, but I think Dude, I, I love will check Clinton. that out. Yeah, it is pretty. Later. George Clinton is a badass motherfucker. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, dude, I can go down... Yeah, go down that rabbit hole a few, a few times, man. Start with George Clinton, and dude, you'll thank me. Yeah. The cars shake it up. Uh, since you've been you know, gone, yeah. Since you've been gone, yeah. You know the cars, man. Um, another band that you know really, I really didn't dig too much in the day. Oh, I love it. Got to give them their props. Though, yeah, know? the Cars is one of the pop bands that I like really dug. Even like yeah. that's right when I was getting into metal, I still like the Cars. Yeah, because I like new wave stuff that was happening. You know, right? Yeah. No, they were strong, no doubt. But Rick Ocasek, you know, yep. mm-hmm. rest in peace, Rick. You just out of here a couple years ago. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Elliot Easton still, uh, you know, he's still kicking around doing stuff. Nice. Yeah. Lindsey Buckingham, Law and Order. Man, what a what a musician there. Yeah, that guy. It, no one plays guitar like that guy either. Nah, man, he's got his own thing. Yeah. The Moody Blues, Long Distance Voyager, and uh, the drummer just passed away from the Moody Blues. Oh, I did not know that. Yep, just passed away like two days ago. It was like eight. Wow. Iron Maiden, Maiden Japan. Mm-hmm. Was didn't Pete and Pete do that? I'm not sure. It was a live record, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm not sure, but uh, it's a good one. Absolutely. Now here's an album. If you're a Kiss fan, that uh, leaves a lot divided. Uh, Kiss from music from the Elder. The Elder, yes. That's uh, that's a polarizing doo, record. Doo, 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 doo. Sorry. You know, uh, some people love it. Some people hate it. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to revisit that one. I'm not, I, I'm kind of, 
I'm, the jury's kind of out on that. Yeah, it was just a me. weird one, but you know, I don't know. Yeah, it wasn't like a Kiss album. You could tell like there was shit going on. Yeah. Nick yeah. Mason's fictitious sports. Mm. Uh, Motorhead, no sleep till Hammersmith. Oh, Anything Motorhead did. Dude, it didn't. Okay, if Lemmy wasn't on tour, and this was like no lie, you've heard stories, you've read articles. You'd go down there to the bar and, oh, at, you know, at the Rainbow, and there's fucking Lemmy. Oh, uh, yeah. Same spot. He had his chair, man. Mm. Don't sit in his chair. Yep. Then we like video then, poker or some kind of video game he used to play all the time, they said. Yeah. And then we have uh, local boys from here, Sticks. Oh, yeah. Paradise Theater, The Best of Times, Too Much Time in My Hands, Rockin' the Paradise. Fantastic. Dude, that album. There was like three albums, like right back to back to back to back that just fucking killed it. Doom, 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 doom. Oh, yeah. Dude, when we were in school, um, I don't know if you were around. I, I know you weren't with me that night, but uh, the uh, RA at the dorms, uh, I think it's, yeah, this is before we moved in together. Uh, I was still at the dorms at the time. She came out the one day and she said, uh, anybody want to go see Sticks tonight? I was like, hell yeah. And uh, it turned out that um, she had dated their tour manager years ago. And he was in town and, you know, called her up and said, hey, you know, we're, you know, we want to come down. Got some tickets for you. So we went down. There was about five of us, man. We got like, uh, we were like fourth or fifth row, got backstage passes, and we got to go back and meet the dudes. It was right a great on. night, man. Right on, right on. Yeah. Then we have Point of Entry by Judas Priest. Oh, yeah. Head on, heading out to the highway, hot rockin' desert plains, Point of Entry. Mm-hmm. Uh, then Neil Young and Crazy Horse Reactor. Mm-hmm. Thin Lizzy Renegade. Bob well, Dylan, blah, 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 blah. George Harrison, Somewhere in England. Mm, don't know I don't, that I don't, yeah, I didn't, I don't know that either. Let's see what else is in here. Oh, here we go. Oh, this is bad. Uh, Alice Cooper Special Forces. This is like when he was like uh, a fucking wreck. <laughs> so like that really doesn't uh, count there. Yeah. Uh, what else? Oh, here we go. Almond Brothers Band, Brothers of the Road. Oh, nice. Straight yeah, man. Heart. Oh, here you go. Stray Cats, Stray Cats. Yeah, it was Stray Cats, Strut. Uh, Rock This Town, Runaway Boys, and The Strut. Absolutely. Dude, I, mm. I'm to this day, dude, Stray Cats and anything Brian Setzer does, I'm always there. Oh, yeah. I met Brian Setzer in, uh, in the airport in L.A. one time. Nice. Actually, it's when I came out when I saw you. Oh, cool. Back in the day. Yeah, I got off the plane, man. There he was with his Gretsch slung over his shoulder. That dude's cool. Yeah, dude. Totally cool. And you know what's too bad? I wish that Roth, David Lee Roth would have done an album with Brian Setzer and Big Band. Oh, wow. You know. That's mad, man. That would have been killer. Because Roth did the Big Band thing before Setzer did, and I think that would have... You know what I mean? He would have had a band leader and he could have just, Dave could have just done his Dave stuff. Yeah, they'd have been magic together, no doubt. Totally. 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 Uh, another band that a lot of people like, uh, UFO, The Wild, The Willing, and The Innocent. Oh, yeah. But uh, wasn't a big fan of that album. Marty well, Ballin is Ballin. Who is it? I have no, it's some like, I have no idea who he is. Oh, he's uh, a few years removed from his Jefferson Starship departure. Marty Ballin went solo. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, don't know. I know. I love him. Oh, There Goes a Neighborhood by Joe Walsh. Ah, uh, yeah, man. You know. Joe Walsh can do no wrong. That's right, man. Wow, Tonight I'm Yours by Rod Stewart. That's 40 years old. Wow. Hmm. That's bizarre. No one cares because it's Elvis Costello. Let's see. Uh, Wild-eyed, Wild-Eyed Southern Boys by 38 Special. 
Oh, yeah. Yawn on the air, Jason. Thank you. I know. I apologize, everybody. Rick Springfield, speaking of, working class dog. That's Jason. You know what? I own that one. That was one of my first records. Nice. Nice. Jesse's girl was on that, I believe. Totally. 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 But, you know. Man, 40 years, huh? Already. Yep. <clears throat> Isn't that bizarre? Kind of makes me feel old, you know. That's <laughs> because we are. Yeah, that's yeah. right. <clears throat> Buying that stuff when it came out, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jason, you sound a little tired today, buddy. Well, you know, I've been up since two a.m. I don't do that to you. Oh, nice, huh? Yeah, this job, nice, man. I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> Subscribe to this podcast so I can retire. Please. Yeah, like and subscribe so Jason can <laughs> at least pay the rent with the with the podcast yeah. earnings. You know, well, let me get let me get some free time. Yeah. Oh, and I'd like to thank everyone for listening. We did wind up popping into the top fifty percent of all uh, of all podcasts. We yeah, may not have you. a ton of listeners and subscribers and people who download, but hey. At least we're in the top fifty percent, so that gives us a little energy to keep going, even though, you know, we're a little down in energy this week because we probably both have been working our asses. And I had insomnia all week. It was a rough about. week for me this Dude, week. Dude, I couldn't sure. sleep for shit, man. I had insomnia. <laughs> I know you told me you. Had oh insomnia. my god! Yeah, like three hours here, three hours there. Well, you know, in the the, the postal business, you know, we're we're heading to Christmas season now, and it's like right. it's been it's been busy enough, but now it just goes like to a hundred. Well, know? dude, so, so I like live off an alley, okay, but I'm also like <laughs> kind of close to a um, a little downtown area, like small yeah. town downtown, and the train station's basically across the street. So they've been resurfacing the fucking train tracks. Oh, great! And like, dude, by the time I like like lay down. Like at four thirty in the morning, like after I stop, every dude, fucking construction starts because they're building something down the fucking street. Right. Oh, great. oh, they get exempted because it's a city thing. What? <laughs> you know, and they're like fucking cut, 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 with like these fucking you're like really twenty fucking things. You know, moving down the like tracks and stuff, and then the redoing the roof next door. You know, I'm like, oh my god, I'm never gonna have a it. chance, man. Yeah, and. So this is like an uh, the building built in like 1953. Every morning at 4:31, beneath me a fucking door I hear go. <laughs> okay, like the front of the place is like a commercial thing, small commercial shop. Then I have uh, basically an apartment and a yard and stuff, and but I'm yeah. on like a street and an alley. Well, dude, there's no one in the basement. The basement's locked. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the people next door, their partner, he was like, no, dude. So we're checking out the other door because there's multiple entries. And I'm like, look, oh, dude, there's fucking cobwebs because no one uses that door. We all go in the back. Yeah. I go in the back door. You'd and, be all Sherlock Holmes about yeah, it. Yeah, so I'm like, the, and oh, look at the dust. There's no fucking door here. Like, who the fuck is down there at 431? So, dude, so yeah, so. At some point, we will set uh, some cameras up there. I mean, the ghost shit doesn't freak <laughs> yeah. me out too much, to, but get to the bottom of this. But mystery. dude, like if like you're almost like ready to you know fall asleep, and then it's like, <laughs> <laughs> what the hell, George Nab Nabbit? You're like George no, I thought you were in Tennessee, right? What are you doing? What are you doing in Chicago? Well, hell, I don't know, boys. <laughs> <laughs> oh man I didn't know you was my neighbor What the hell What Corn swaggler What Go in there. are you doing yeah. here Vance Yeah Well George is that your uh, Your fucking uh, Magnet driven fucking still Dab nab you <laughs> I got some corn liquor down here. You want to try it? Right. Now you shut up. Oh, Jason, I got some roller skates for your hands. <laughs> right. That way you won't run over your fingers no more. Right. And look, I leave. I even put little shock absorbers in there. 
<laughs> right. I'm smart. I'm the smartest redneck in Tennessee. <laughs> we don't want you to get arthritis and all. <laughs> oh, man. And the comics. We love you, George. And the comics fucking that he sent. Oh, my God. Those are so oh, dude. Eventually, Probably. we're going to do something with the comics once we do go to video. Yeah, and stuff. yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll put them on our T-shirts, right? We'll have yeah. caricatures that he drew of us. Oh, for sure. And we're going to take... So we used to do these, if you didn't listen to the one episode. George was uh, Jay and I's roommate uh, back in college, post-college. And, we saved him from homelessness. Yeah. And uh, great guy. And... We used to do these elaborate comics. Like, so if you had to leave for work at like eight in the morning and everyone else was sleeping, like you'd wake up at seven and or be ready at seven so you could spend an hour fucking around doing this fucking bullshit comic that only the three of us would get. Right, you know, but it was such shit. Yeah, but everyone else, because there's like five people living in a townhouse, but everyone read it. But you know, it was pretty funny. So yeah, those things will be made into little animated uh, skits and. We'll wind up doing some funny stuff with that. Good stuff. Absolutely. Like, subscribe. You can even do a tip jar down there. You can go to cupofcoffee.com, buy us a coffee. You can subscribe every month. And we Uh, love our coffee. Yeah, there's different levels. And so that will include publications by yours truly and merchandise and all types of other cool things coming down the pike. And uh, that comes out of our crazy plans. Yeah, you know, like this. Yeah, we want to, the show, we want to make sure that guys have somewhere to come and talk. So, hey, if you want to come on and talk, just let us know. Yeah, shoot us an email, man. You got us some stories. Absolutely. Sorry, we pressed the pause button for some. Damn it, I touched the goddamn wrong button, Jay. <laughs> Hellfire and tarnation. Right. What in the, what in the, but, uh, yeah, oh, and I want to thank everyone for checking out Woke of the Worlds. Doing pretty good. It's fantastic. Absolutely. And uh, I just finished writing the follow-up for Christmas. Uh, it's a parody of A Christmas Carol, and uh, that should be pretty interesting. And it's uh, starring Mr. Vito Bupkis as the Scrooge. And uh, we even have uh, our... Uh, Friendly Neighborhood Engineer uh, is starring in it as well. That's right. And what are you playing there, Biff? Oh, I'm playing Bob Scratchit. What? Bob Scratchit. Bob Scratchit. <laughs> okay, and uh, and Bob's your neighbor. Or Bob's your uncle. So, but, uh, uh, no, Scrooge is your uncle. Anyway, yeah, so uh, that'll, be, that'll be fun. And uh, hopefully we can try to get uh, some music... Um, crafted by Mr. Jason Clark with an E. Yeah, we'll see what we come up with. Some uh, some Christmas uh, one track electric guitar, Christmas carols. But uh, we'll see if we can twist it up a little bit. Right. So does it snow where you're at, Jay? It it does every once in a while, um, and it's like hell on earth when it does because these <laughs> these fucking idiots. right because they're not. Yeah. Oh my God. They're not set they, up for it. You know, it'll snow like. Uh, Put some beet juice on it. <laughs> the last couple of years, we haven't had much. Like, you know, sometimes we'll get ice storms. That, you know, that's pandemonium as well. Right. But uh, I remember a few years back, we got like a foot of snow. And it was like <laughs> the interstates, man. Like, everybody was like just parked. Clusterfuck. Yeah. It was, yeah, dude, it was crazy. And these, these idiots go out, and they don't know how to drive it under a wreck. And it's like, it's, you know, and, and they freak out too, dude. They go right. out, like, they'll they'll buy every bit of bread and milk and eggs, and, you oh, know, the stores sure. are bare, and they act like it's the end of the world. But the crazy thing is, it's like a day or two later, it, it just melts, you know. It gets yeah. warm again, and it goes away. So they freak out. Right but yeah, around. once in a while, once in a while it happens. They're, uh, I don't know, Farmer's Almanac saying this year is supposed to be record setting, record setting cold, so we'll see. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Absolutely. So just so everyone knows, uh, this episode we had to pull right out of our arses. And, uh, but, you know, you got to think on your feet. Yeah, yeah, our guest uh, couldn't make it, so we're just winging it, man. 
you know. Uh, Absolutely. Something to listen to. Mm-hmm. But next Saturday we will have uh, we will have another guest on for sure, and uh, yeah. So I'll talk to uh, see if we can get the Papa Bass on for next Saturday. Yeah, work might be someone else as well. We do not know, but uh, we'll have someone on. So it sure. seems like we're finding our footing here, and uh, you know the show will change as we go. But you know, basically it's. Just some dudes hanging out, not doing anything wrong, not being toxic. Just having some drinks. Because we're uh, talking and having conversation. You know? Absolutely. You got to talk about it, boys. Thank you, Vito. Hey, why not? I know. So uh, I think I'm going to have that uh, other shot of uh, Southern Comfort. There you go. In in honor of... uh, my brother Ray for Veterans Day. Here you go. Salute, Ray. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, Jason. Yeah, man. We do have to mention our. Uh, I just have. I don't have a bunch of stories like the cool stories you got about what's going on. So I'm just going to go through all the people in my family because there's a shitload of them. Yeah. Who served? My grandfather, Victor Custash, my dad, Raymond E. Custash, my uncle, James Custash, my brother, Raymond V. Custash, my sister, Deborah Sorrells, my cousin, Cindy Custash, my cousin, Marion Lambert. So, uh, I'm just going to, I'm not going to go through the thing. So, C.J. Lambert, Andre Lambert, Heather Hogreef, my ex-wife, uh, her dad, Ed, her grandfather, Ed, my ex-brother-in-law, Lon Sorrells, my uncle, Bill, my uncle, Al, my two uncle, Bills. My Uncle Bob, Cheryl, uh, Bob Short, Leif, and I believe that's it. And I'm sorry if I forgot anybody. But, yeah, a lot of them. So thanks for your service. Absolutely. Thank you. And who in your family uh, served there, Jason? Uh, Yeah, uh, my dad, uh, Vietnam, Um, my grandfather, John Jones, World War II, and uh, was actually... Dude, your grandfather's name was John Jones? That's the Mar- name was John, John, John the, That's Jones. the Martian <laughs> Manhunter's fucking name, dude, in the fucking Justice <laughs> League. That's awesome. <laughs> yes! That's a true story. But God I, damn, was, that makes sense. <laughs> I told he actually, you! Uh, he was Eisenhower's driver in Panama. Um, he was stationed down there, yeah. I got that's pictures pretty of cool. him uh, in the Jeep with Eisenhower next to him. Dude, that'd be a good movie to write right there. Yeah. Interesting. And, uh, yeah, a great grandfather was World War One. Um, and uh, my uncle Gene, uh, Marine Corps, Vietnam. Uncle James, Marine Corps, Vietnam. Um, and who am I forgetting? Let me think. Uh, my great uncle Gerald, uh, military police, World War Two. Nice. Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, and that's just two people talking about their, you know. Yeah. Like it used to be, you know. Choosing military life was uh, like being a plumber, and I, yeah. I'm not belittling it. It's like, oh, you know, okay, yeah, oh, you're military, okay. Yeah, it's what you did, right? I yeah. mean, it's, like, it's what everybody did. You know, like yeah. in my family, it was like, okay, you know, they gave one, they would give one to the military and one to the church. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like the Italians, but we weren't Italian, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, um, you know, back then, I mean, uh, I think, you know, compared to today, I mean, everybody was, was aware of the value of the service, you know? Um, oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, sadly, it's, I think it's, it's been lost, you know? Yeah. And, you know, we were fucking defeating tyrants. Yeah. And, you know, I, I mean, uh, I didn't, I didn't serve when I was young. I was, uh, you know, I wanted to be a rock star. Yeah, me too. <laughs> or something. <laughs> I figured after uh, everyone they got in my family, I, I was free to do what I wanted because that's why they served. So, yeah, 
Um, but you know, now that I'm older, I mean, uh, I look back and I, I, I kind of wish I did, you know, um, but well, I've hey. been involved with the USO stuff. I've been involved with toys for tots. I've been involved with, you know, we did this thing called candy for soldiers where we, you know, right after nine 11, where we brought, uh, literally a ton of chocolate, mm. uh, to the great lakes naval base and, you know, right gave it to, you know, right before Christmas and it, it was pretty cool, but, awesome. uh, you know, always supported uh, the yeah. veterans and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, we love our vets, man. We do. We do. Yeah, yeah. And, and then uh, you know, I worked a lot with um, people coming back um, with the VA and uh, transitioning them to uh, disabled life, and that was uh, you'd, man, the stories you'd hear were pretty amazing. I'm sure. Yeah. You know, but so we thank you, uh, men and the women. Absolutely. Of uh, saving the country. Absolutely. So we could be, uh, you know, smart asses swilling some bjar. <laughs> That's right. Swilling some bjar on a Saturday night into a microphone. Being our idiotic selves. Yep. You know. Yep. Yeah. So you can tell Jason's getting older and he has to poo. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely getting older. Yeah. Yeah. So Jason works 900 days a week. <laughs> yeah. I work every holiday, Christmas Day, Thanksgiving. Do you? Oh yeah, man. We get no holidays off. We're always gone. Oh, that's about the mail never quits, man. Right. So, like the people in the post office, says, you know, they might have the day off, but we're there bringing the mail to them and delivering it, so they when they come into work, it's there for them. So nice. Yeah. Don't crush my taffeta. <laughs> Where's my stimulus check? Right. Nice. Oh my god, can't even imagine that. <laughs> but damn. Yeah, it's on and on. Two I get up at two AM man, I usually crawl in bed about ten PM. You know, a few hours of sleep and I'm off again. Yeah, we gotta change that schedule, my man. Yeah, let's once our podcast dreams become a reality, then I'm retiring. Then <laughs> I'm too old. It doesn't shit. take much, folks. <laughs> we're not we don't we're not asking for Joe yeah, Rogan we're numbers. To get rich, just yeah. you know, pay the bills. You know, and uh, if you want to kick back and hang out, the couch is always open, the coffee pot's always warm. There's always cold beverages in Jay's freezer because stay the fuck out of mine. Just kidding. And, uh, you know, we have a candy store close by. But, uh, <laughs> all right, I think we're going to wrap it up for, for this edition of Creativity Talking. Biff, you got anything to say? Uh, nope. Okay. Uh, Jay, got any closing remarks, sir, of a... Uh, 40 years of uh, epic albums. Man, just a lot of great rock and roll, man. And thank God for it, right? I mean, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it still holds up today. You know, you turn on classic rock stations. and uh, Well, I and thank Yoda, but I do them. pray to Michael Jordan for making bald men cool. Thank yes. you, Michael, as always. And, uh, you know, when it's late at night and you think of something funny and you know your friend's asleep and it's 4 a.m.? <laughs> Call him. It's just creativity yeah, talking. Yeah, wake his ass up. That's just creativity talking. Anyway, another Saturday night for creativity talking live with the Vag. I am V, and you are who? I am J. He is the J and the VJJ. You know what's funny? We could have done with, when George was on, we could have been the VJG. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Uh, we'll get it next time. Damn you with your tomfoolery. <laughs> anyway, thank you, ladies and gents, and all in between. Yes, sir. Love we'll you. We'll see you next time. Oh, Jason, right. love you, buddy. Love you, man. See right you. On. All right, hang on. I'm going to click off this recording like the old. Oh, would you shut the fuck up, you drunk motherfucker?